Hello everyone and welcome. Finally this week I will be explaining limited slip differentials. I know this has been requested quite a few times and it's been requested quite some time ago. So I'm finally getting to it uh, and more specifically I will be explaining clutch type limited slip differentials. So before we get started on how clutch type limited slip differentials work, it's important that you first understand differentials. So I'll link uh, videos in the description here. I'd like you to watch my video on differentials, open versus lock differentials, and also on multi-plate clutches. All of those are essential to understanding how a limited slip differential works, specifically the clutch type limited slip diff. So, looking here at the differential inside of it, you'll notice a few things are different. We've got these pressure rings which are added. We've also got two clutch packs, one on each uh, drive shaft that has been added. And also, our pinion shaft is no longer connected to the differential housing. It's only connected to each of the pinion gears. So, what happens here is, we've got these pressure rings that have been added. Now, these pressure rings rotate with the differential housing. So, as this pinion rotates, and it rotates this uh, differential housing, it's connected to these pressure rings. So, these pressure rings are going to rotate with it. Now the pressure rings are in contact with the pinion uh, shaft. So when the differential housing rotates, it rotates the pressure rings. The pressure rings contact the pinion shaft, and then they rotate the pinion gears, and then that turns the drive shafts. Okay, so a limited slip differential, the purpose of it is to have the best of both worlds. It wants to act like an open differential, where it allows for different speeds between each tire, and it also wants to allow for uh, torque transfer between each tire. So kind of like a uh, locked differential, where you can have different torque sent to each wheel. So how it does this is when you accelerate, so this pinion gear will start to rotate, you'll have a force coming in. Now we're going to look at these uh, pressure rings from above. So you can see here is the pinion shaft, this black shaft, that rotates these pinion gears which rotates the drive wheels, or drive shafts. So these uh, pressure rings can move horizontally but they cannot move in this axis. So what that means is when you accelerate this uh, pinion shaft here will be forced down because you're going to be turning, you're going to be pushing this uh, the black differential housing is going to have a force going up. So when that force goes up, this pinion shaft is going to be pressed against these two walls here. Now you can see that there's a slant here. So when this pinion shaft is pressed against these two walls, it's going to be pressing on them like so. So as it does this, these uh, pressure rings are going to be forced to move outward. Now when these pressure rings move outward, they're going to compress these clutch packs. So just like a multi-plate clutch, they'll compress these clutch packs and it's going to lock up these drive shafts with the differential housing. So basically, when they're compressed, you're going to have something that behaves just like a lock differential. The only difference is, to, in order to have a different speed from one tire to the other, it has to overcome the friction within the clutch pack. So if one tire needs to move faster and the frictional force between these uh, two clutch packs is exceeded, then the one tire that needs to move faster will do so, and the other tire, let's say that's the left tire that moves faster. So the differential housing is going to move faster with it. The left clutch pack is going to have these plates sliding so that it can rotate at a slower rate. Now, or that's actually the right and this is the left, I'm sorry. So what happens is when you're not accelerating, you're just going around the corner, you're not on the brakes, or maybe you are on the brakes, um, but lightly, but let's just say we're not on the brakes at all and we're just driving. So, and we're going around a corner. So this pinion shaft here is going to be free just sitting here and it's not going to be exerting a force on these pressure rings. So since these pressure rings aren't going to have a, a good force on them, these clutch packs will be allowed to rotate freely. So when you're going around a corner and you're not accelerating or decelerating, those drive shafts are going to be freely allowed to rotate at different speeds. 
once again, once you hit the accelerator, that's when this pinion pushes against these, uh, this pinion shaft pushes against these pressure rings and compresses these clutch packs. So here's kind of a 3D view of these pressure rings and what it looks like. So as you rotate, I mean these are circular, they're not, they're not square and blocky like they may seem. I mean, they, they all fit within this uh, cylindrical differential housing. So, I hope that is clear and what the benefit of this is, is that you can allow for torque transfer because when you've got these locked up, a lock differential will allow torque to go to the wheel with more grip. On the flip side, when you are not accelerating or braking, depending on the type of limited slip diff, then you allow for different speeds. So that's the goals of the limited slip differential, and that is how it does it. In my next video, I'll be explaining the different types where you'll hear about one-way, two-way, or 1.5-way limited slip differentials.